This is Twit. So Intel, I remember, boy, I was excited when Intel announced, uh, what would they call it? Not CrossFit. Cross, cross point. Cross point. Uh, <laughs> CrossFit. CrossFit. The new, <laughs> the newest RAM. Cross point, which was a 3D uh, technology for making memory. And everybody... Well, I mean, I mean, we're doing that now on NAND anyway. Anyway. Okay. Right. I mean, there's literally hundreds of layers in NAND now. So NAND is very much 3D. Oh. So I was all excited. I mean, when, when did they announce this? Five, five or six years ago. And uh, 2015. Uh, yeah. And they branded it Optane. And yep. the promise of it was, what, faster, cheaper? What were they... What was the... Hope for for 3D cross -play. so cheaper than RAM, right? That was the idea. Cheaper than basically, it sat in between RAM and solid state traditional solid state storage. And that's how Intel as, has been selling Optane, which is is it RAM? Is it solid state? Yes. Yeah, they've been selling. Well, they were selling both types of devices. Yes, right? there were, it's both. There was there was a there was a dim form factor that was sort of sit alongside the RAM in a server, and you can make a very large memory pool where the the DRAM is actually like a caching layer on top of the Optane DIMMs, which were you know sort of the the, the, the memory pool, if you would, right? But slower than what DRAM was, obviously, because there's you know there's always a catch, right? You don't, can't get something for nothing. Uh, so that was one. You know, one solution, and then the other solution was you take the same chips, or basically the same chips, and you stick them behind a SSD controller uh, and connect it to PCIe. Now you have and a, now you a have, drive. Now you have a regular drive, right? So they were covering, you know, both both types of uh, of forms there, right? Um, but there was just someday there's going to be like a Harvard Business School study or some kind of like somebody is at some point is going to have to put something together that just sort of covers what? here's all of the things that were against it. This is my right? question. Is it a market problem or a technology problem that killed Optane? It was kind of a little bit of everything. Oh. In my opinion, at least. Right. You had you had just sort of the fundamentals. Right. You had this thing that was so much faster than what was there traditionally as far as the SSD Twice as fast went. as regular SSDs. It's like doubling the speed. Oh, right? way faster than double. Even more. Um, oh, yeah. The latency, when, when, when the Optane devices came out, the latency was roughly like, the read latency was like one-tenth of a regular SSD. Wow. Right? But, it, you know, speaking as far as like, well, how does that impact the whole system? Right. If you make a thing that just goes ten times as fast, suddenly the bottleneck shifts anywhere it's else. It's now an IO IO bottleneck. Yeah. Well, it's 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 everything other than the IO, right? Like it's you know if you if if you can make the IO one tenth the the speed or one tenth the time to complete, then all of a sudden, if there was any other bottleneck or any other inefficiency, ah. even with the be it with the kernel, you know, the software, uh, the application uh, trying to access the thing, right? Sort of it's sort of uh, shifted the burden everywhere else all of a sudden. And it was a matter of, well, how fast can you possibly make an SSD, like a PCIe SSD that plugs into the system? And there is sort of a, a, a glass ceiling there where it's like, well, you know, the controller can only go so fast. Uh, just to negotiate to communicate on the PCI bus takes a few microseconds, right? So if you have a thing that could that that can operate in 10 or fewer microseconds, uh, and the PCI, just speaking PCI Express, consumes, say, I don't know, a third or half of that, right? Like, you know, what, what was previously a very small fraction of a regular uh, traditional SSD uh, response time was now very significant, right? Um, and so when you combined all that stuff together, just, you know, that's just, that's just only speaking to the point of how much faster, can, you know, was the user experience for it in the SSD form factor, right? So it took literal years for everything else to sort of progress and for other other pieces of the puzzle there to, to become faster around those devices in order for the system to shine more and more, you know, because of those devices. Right? So it was just ahead um, of its time. Why not keep it around? Until there was until... there was an, there was so much more there was so much more just working against it, really, the whole time, right? And and there was also it was the price was high, right? 
uh, you know, to, did it? Did it? Yeah, make but sense? if was it's it... two and a half times faster, I don't care if it's twice as expensive, right? Right, and and granted, there were still people, you know, right near the end. There was uh, the last the last SSD that Intel made that had Optane in it. The like, like traditional SSD wise was a P fifty eight hundred X. This is just a fire breathing SSD, right? The thing was just super fast. Um, for the first time. They had shifted to a control. Like previously, the controllers were even a bottleneck, because in order to take most advantage of the low latencies, they sort of had to kneecap themselves on what was the highest throughput you could get from the device. Right. So the earlier Optane devices couldn't even saturate Gen 3 PCI Express. Right. You have a, a bus that should go nearly four gig per second, but the devices were only going two. Right. So if you and actually Leo, I think you had like a 900p at yeah. one point. Yeah. Right. That drive would only do 2.2 or 2.4 right. gig per second. Basically, it was bottlenecked by its own controller wow. throughput-wise, right? The latencies were amazing, but pure throughput, you know, there was sort of this ceiling there. And so that P5800X, when it came out, was amazing because they finally did a controller where it could just go full speed of the bus. It just didn't care. There was no longer an Achilles heel as far as, oh, it's it's fast here, but it's not fast here. Like, that thing just annihilated everything. However... It was expensive. Um, yeah, but uh, and, boy, it seems you know, like that's. It, it feels like they killed something before it really had a chance to live up to its potential. I, I guess, but like you're talking, what seven, eight years? Yeah. So, right? like, so will we eventually have memory that's as fast as this? Kind of. I mean, I don't think. I don't know how long it will take for somebody else to do a cross point style media right so as far as you know will we see another media come out that's as fast uh, that was as fast as uh, Optane media wise i don't know uh might take a few years if it does who knows there so, but there are some there are some aspects of the storage community and industry that the the mere presence of Optane as a technology helped to drive and one of the big ones is cxl right compute express right. link which was sort of the industry trying to solve, you know, the issue of, hey, if you have really fast media that sits at a different tier from DRAM, how do you connect it to the system? How do you integrate it with the operating system? How do you take advantage of it in a, in a more, you know, appropriate way? Um, the funny thing about this is if CXL just appeared out of nowhere, say, seven years ago, Intel would, prob would probably have not announced, you know, stopping wow. cross point right it, it probably probably would have been profitable because there was just this easy here's this better way to connect it to the system and take full advantage of it right but that wasn't there is this big chicken and the egg uh right. you know, dilemma of what the about something like um apple's doing with the or or the xbox with unified memory um then you don't have to worry about the bus so much right uh, what if we i put mean it you still have to worry ship? about yes but you still have to worry about the the, the performance capabilities of the different tiers. In other words, like how are you attaching? Right. Even if you have a different, a different you sort of you still architecture. have a kind of a bus. It's an internal to the die. Yeah, there's still there's still a physical thing to be yeah. solved. Yeah. Right. Um, I feel but again, bad. Yes, the software uh, piece is important. So I guess the question everybody, or certainly I had, was: Is this a failure on Intel to capitalize on what was a good technology, or was this not such a great technology, or? It sounds like it was a good technology. It was a, it, it was maybe too good. It, the technology the it technology died, was great. It died too uh, young, too good. It was expensive. It was expensive to make. Yeah, I would imagine. I don't even know the actual numbers. I never. So that's part of the was problem. Told about that, but it could not have been cheap to make it. Right. I mean, I so before I even started working for Intel, I wrote the article at PC Perspective of how I did all the the deep dive on uh you know ISSCC filings and things from years prior where. Basically, I figured out that, hey, this stuff is actually just phase change memory, right? <laughs> Even though Intel, when it first launched, would swear up and down that it wasn't. They didn't want to say it was for, I still don't know what the reason was. Um, but, you know, the technology itself was amazing. And I would even say, like, you know, I mean, phase change memory for, for decades was like the flying car of PC storage. Yeah. Right? Remember that? Like, it was always, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure... 
I'm sure, Leo, you mentioned the term phase change memory on several of the first round of screensavers. Yeah, along with as a thing, fusion you know, uh, energy and, uh, <laughs> and uh, sure, yeah, and flying cars, and quantum right? computing, yeah, and flying cars, yeah, uh, right, exactly. Flux and so, <laughs> yeah, um, so I mean, it actually came to be. It probably wasn't cheap to make because, again, you're trying to. I mean, you're literally making a thing that can make a little tiny you know, microscopic pole of, me of metal alloy molten <laughs> and re-solidify. Yeah, that's wild, isn't it? Yeah. Right? That's just wild. Even to yeah, think about it now, yeah. that's ridiculous that it's happening inside of a chip to store a bit, right. Right? right? I mean, it's, you know, it's crazy enough to think that you're quantum tunneling electrons into a NAND cell to store bits, but actually melting like 600 degrees Celsius metal. It's kind of magic of what's going on in there anyway, isn't it? I mean, you just said sure, quantum yeah. tunneling. I mean, my God, it's magic. Yeah, so, you know, the technology was great. It's just that there were there was an awful lot of stuff working against it. You know, there were Will all, we there see was, speeds like that uh, with other technologies again? Or uh, I mean, I hope so. As an enthusiast, I yeah. want things to go faster. Yeah. Right? Um, however, uh, so like the Optane... Uh, PCI SSD latencies were roughly in the 10-ish microsecond, you know, per transaction uh, time frame, right? And when it came out, SSDs were running at about 100, 90 to 100 it's microseconds. Amazing, yeah. Right? But now, modern-day SSDs are actually getting down to, like, the 50s and the 40s microseconds. For much lower cost, so, yeah. For a much lower cost, yeah. right? And you're And you're getting to the point where... Uh, you know, Optane was well into the diminishing returns, right? It's like when, when you, if you got to 40 or 50, if you go all the way down to 10, you're really splitting hairs on right. actually seeing much more of a benefit right. in that system, right? So, you know, it's kind of like the NAND things are, are, are getting to the point where it's it's close enough, right? And it's, Intel it's has it. Enough. They're saying now, Pat Gessens, you're saying, we're not giving up on Optane, right? We're doing – they're still – I mean – no, his his phrasing was they are winding down the optane. Winding business. it down. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And Micron that doesn't walked mean away from it last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Micron walked away Micron, from it. They switched uh, Well, that's year, part so. of the problem. Micron was the co-developer of this. If Micron doesn't make them, what is Intel right. going to do, right? Mm -hmm. right? But you still have... Micron you know, actually I mean, worked still... on... Instead, we're going to do CXL instead. <laughs> right. <laughs> Intel still has another, like, the next server CPU to launch, which is supposed to have support for the next generation of their DEM form factor Optane. And I don't know if they're, are they, are they going to, like, yank the feature out from under the next Xeon to come out? I, I would guess probably not, since, like, I think all the work would have been done. Yeah. Again, I didn't work right. in that. So maybe get it while you Intel. can. <laughs> Sounds like. I mean. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's, it's like. It's going to be I a mean, collector's still, issue. Yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe. There are, um, I, I know there are people who are willing to spend for that kind of speed. Like, uh, s speed is right. worth more than the gold. It's just the, the question yeah. was, were there enough people willing to right. spend that? Right, 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 right. To justify Intel continuing to try to make it. Right. So, Thank you. I've been wanting to ask this for some time, and I, yeah. I don't know. And trust me, it, it pains me that that's the way it went, sure. right? Because, I mean, sure. as just as a pure enthusiast, I mean, heck, the whole thing that got me into the industry so cool. as a tech journalist was that I just wanted the newest, fastest yeah. storage so cool. thing, right? Um, yeah. You know, I mean, and at heart, got, I, if I got, want the things to go faster. If you've got Optane, there's no reason, you know, uh, good, good sound in our chat room says, my desktop has a 16 gig Optane memory. Be happy, right? There's nothing to that too. Yeah, as like a caching tier. Yeah, it was great for that too. Yeah, yeah, it was great for all sorts of yeah. things. It's just that it's just that there wasn't enough volume at that at that bleeding edge, right? Even right. even the caching argument is a hard one to make because most people are fine just with one regular SSD in their system, mm -hmm. and they just they're like, well, why do I need to have this other extra complication? Isn't that funny? Right? They've got, computers yeah. have gotten so fast, we don't. Maybe we don't really need to get them that much faster. <laughs> That's wild. What a Until wild. Until we have harder thought. tasks. Yeah. 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 I mean, yes, there is still a subset of tasks that even years from now, an Optane SSD will probably do better. And the, the biggest one that comes to mind is if you have a bunch of heavy writing going on while you're trying to do, like, the system be responsive in reading at the same time. Something so like actually a other. network operations center might need, for instance. Uh, Something like trans well, maybe transactions. Even, 
Yeah. Maybe even power users, like you're a Linux user, you're doing a kernel compile and a few other things in the background, and you want Jeez. your foreground things to also be speedy. Yeah, yeah right? of course. Who um, but again, yeah. it really isn't to the bleeding edge power user territory there. Right. Right. You really got to be pushing the system pretty hard to, to see those advantages. Alan Melvin Tano, ladies and gentlemen. I miss having this guy on, uh, on our regular uh, shows. Such important and interesting information. I appreciate it. It, made me, it felt like an old uh, Twitch episode. It did, that didn't was it? Kind of nice. It's back, baby. <laughs> Twitch briefly. is back. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate it. 